Hello, my name's James Waitley. I'm the minister at Verwood United Reformed Church. Welcome to this uh, short devotional reflection for Sunday the 25th of April. In the church, uh, today is sometimes known as Good Shepherd Sunday. That's principally because of the Bible readings that are often used on this, the third Sunday after Easter. They use the 23rd Psalm, and they also use a passage from John's Gospel where Jesus speaks about him being the Good Shepherd. And the compilers of the lectionary put that alongside a reading from Acts where Peter and John witness to Jesus in court and also part of the first letter of John where there's uh, an explanation about the nature and quality of love. I'd like to think to begin with, though, about the idea of Jesus as the Good Shepherd. And think for a moment, please, about the qualities you need to be a shepherd and the qualities you expect or you might imagine would be uh, experienced by a flock when they are shepherded well. They would look for and receive protection, security, direction, provision of food and shelter, and of course, rescue if that's necessary. Sometimes though, it's more poignant or certainly hits home more, uh, particularly if you'd like to think about how things feel when the shepherd is not there, when a shepherd is absent. Imagine how you would be feeling. Probably worn out and exhausted by the fear and anxiety about the environment, about the need to find food and shelter, and that sense of hopelessness that if you were to be lost or injured, then no one would be coming to your rescue. It sets into perspective the qualities that are so important that Jesus sets out for those who are part of the flock to experience, to know that quality of God's love. But alongside that as well, there is the sense in which this sets out for us the qualities that are required of us as faithful followers of Jesus. You might want to think just for a moment about the ways in which those good shepherding qualities are part of your daily routine life to offer to other people where you can shelter or help or protection or rescue, to look out and care for those who are weaker or more vulnerable. And this leads us on rather nicely to reflect just for a moment on that passage from the first letter of John. This part of the letter is all about becoming a Jesus-shaped community, what it means to be followers of Jesus in this early church context. And though that happens well 2,000 years ago, it's a question and a challenge that's ap accurate and appropriate for us even this day in our situation. For each of us are being asked to think about what it means to be part of a Jesus-shaped community. Now, in one sense, you could sum it up in the title of the Beatles song, All You Need Is Love. And that certainly would be something that comes through from this, this passage from the first letter of John. But the important part about this is that it must be an active love. Words on their own are fine, but actually won't do anything. What needs to take place is real caring actions. So, to use the phrase, those who follow Jesus are invited to, um, to provide their witness or to provide their evidence of Jesus in the course of their daily life and, if necessary, to use words to do that. Words were necessary, though, for Peter and John in the Acts reading when they were arrested and put before the court because of their witness to Jesus as the Saviour. In that instance, the great crowd had not only heard and seen the power and effect of Jesus, but had responded. 
Sometimes our faithfulness to God will put us in places of danger. And I think we should take comfort from Luke's account in Acts of the way in which Peter and John fearlessly announced and shared that good news and were prepared to live sacrificially in the way that Jesus had and does and will be sacrificially loving and shepherding for each and every one of us. In these days, we can have hope and trust and confidence that we are not abandoned to our own folly and failure, that we are not left to wander unguided, that when we find ourselves lost or without hope, then the rescuer will come. For Jesus promises to be all these to those who will recognise him as their good shepherd. In the words of the psalmist, the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing else that I need. May the love of God in Jesus, the Good Shepherd, be with you today and in the days of the week ahead. Amen.